Good morning, it's day two of Polly. So, obviously I didn't give myself a nice haircut yesterday. I just let it be long around the sides and everything, which doesn't suit the overflow of my hair. So let's have a look at some of the differences. If you've just been watching all the Lace series, then you'll understand that this is a uh, We're just losing in a game of risk. That was stupid. I shouldn't have done that move. Okay, so the front hairline with Polly. This is way too bleached blonde. It went way too high. It should have just been short. But if you watch the... I actually have a video. You can go back into the archives on my channel and watch how I messed up by putting too much um, blonde hair dye, bleach, peroxide on the front here. Now the, the front line here, you can see a little bit of shiny glue there, if you look very closely, but barely at all. And so the poly hairline has no dirty line. And it will continue to have no dirty line, from my experience. Occasionally a hair will get caught in there, but one, maybe, every three days. It's no big deal at all. It's a million times <laughs> It's a hundred times easier than lace. Now that uh, tape marking method that I used to sh show you to how to make the lace get a nice thick layer of glue all along the front helped, but it didn't help stop the that dirty line from appearing every day. This uh, poly hair piece has been laid a bit too far up that way, which is a problem. Whatever shape I decide to cut the new pieces out, I think it would be best if I make it absolutely symmetrical so that I can just flip it however I want, whichever direction. Here's something cool. You know, uh, I've complained before, how do, you, how do you change the direction of these hairs that are, you know, when they come from the factory, they're brushed outwards from the center. But there's nothing in, this is lace. There's nothing inherent in the way not to tie it in that would force it to go from here in that direction, from here in that direction, from here in that direction. It's just being brushed that way. And I thought maybe some sort of chemical process had hardened it to stay in that direction so that when you placed it on your head, that bit there would be in the crown area. Because if you look at this, if you look at the center point here on the lace where it's uh, been designed to be brushed in that direction, if I just keep my finger in that position, it's located here. That's where it is, it's closer to the back because that's the dead center of the hairpiece right there. You can see all the roads meet in the middle. So I thought, well, can I just brush that out? So while it's a full hairpiece, un untampered with, I thought I would give that a go. And it was just as easy as doing this. I just brushed in one direction while it was wet and it hasn't sprawling back into that. It's remained in the direction I brushed it in. That's a French lace hairpiece. That's another French lace hairpiece. And that is a poly hairpiece. Now clearly the center isn't as clearly defined without the stitching. I don't want the stitching knots in the way, especially this stitching here. That stitching, that stitching, that stitching, all right? That's what they're doing these days. It's no good to try and keep it rounded. It's terrible. So if I have a hair piece that sort of has those things sticking in it, the moment you brush that to the side or pull it in any way, it rips open and imagine the double the distance of that is now a big barren wasteland with no hair in it. Doesn't happen with Polly. This sticker here, I had this on my head the other day in another video and it was invisible. But it was invisible kind of through the lace as well because I placed it closer to the back. On this one, I've actually been able to unstitch it from there. But in this one, the, oh, I must have unstitched it from that one as well. The numbers are gone from those. 
because I'm just still doing this there. But from the other side, you won't be able to see it. So, more advantages to poly, especially showing you this, which is a major one. Aside from how easy it was to apply, a major one is there is no dirty line. So what do you think of them apples? I'll uh, continue to sort of gel it down and brush it back over the next couple of days maybe, unless I decide to cut it today or later, but I probably won't. And there's the transition line where the medium density here transitions into the sort of medium light density of my balding area here. I think it's a bit more than medium light actually. In fact, I think just just from the feeling of the cutting of the hair with the with the medium density lace and this poly hair piece, it feels like this density is slightly less than medium. Not medium light. Medium light's really thin. I don't really have any medium light left anymore. I mean, you know, French uh, Swiss lace. I don't have any left. I'll have a shower and I'll uh, show you the hairpiece after I've had a shower so we can examine whether or not the glue bloats and if there's any lifting going on around here. At present here in winter, I've got no sweat from overnight underneath here, but I know that on a hot day or if I'm just exerting myself in any way, it will get filled with sweat under there and start lifting. Unless I do the pin method, pinhole method, which I haven't ever tried before. I don't really have any pins. I'm sure it's not hard to find them for sale. Maybe even something with a nice handle, like one of those things you put on a cork board to hold up notes and messages. Okay, so this is a poly hairline after a shower. And after a day. So poly, poly day too. The transition between the hairpiece and the perimeter is still about the same as it would be after a couple of days of lace. But you can see here where there's a gap, clear divide, where the poly is just plastic straight line against the backdrop of hair. So, uh, yeah, there's no dirty line. And I trust there still won't be by day six or seven or eight or nine or 10 really. It just doesn't gather glue. The, glue. the the dirt just can't get to the glue. It's all concealed. With lace, that's the opposite, right? As we just saw in the previous videos. So Polly is really beautiful. I'm just so glad to be rid of that lace 
fiasco. It's a pain in the ass. Probably just a whole lot easier to deal with. Now you might say it, but the front hairline doesn't look real. It's not a clean transition between your, your forehead to your hairline. And I'll admit you're a little bit right there. If you're gonna compare lace day one with poly day two. But lace day two compared to poly day two, poly wins. Lace day three versus poly day one, poly wins. It's only day one on lace that makes lace worthwhile. So I'm just gonna change your lace hairpiece every single fucking day. There's no point wearing lace. It's just a pain in the ass to deal with. Poly is fucking so much easier. So this is my brand new muck that I haven't really opened. Just to take out the plastic and shit. That's just how it was delivered, I didn't scoop that. That's a bald patch on the back. You're gonna see it pretty well because the sun's gonna be straight on it. There should still be some residual uh, spray tan, so it's still completely visible and obvious. And I might have to consider. What do you call that? Not a full cap? I thought it was called a full cap. We just go all the way back over there, covering the entire horseshoe. But shaving all that seems like a pain in the ass. Um, I don't want a ball patch back there, obviously. But also I don't want to do the whole hairpiece thing. How bad is it? Give it to me straight dark. At any rate, I hope this, uh... Poly... I mean, it's not exactly nose to spine these hairs they're sort of going horizontal which wrecks it makes it more of a wall of hair but there's no line of dirt at least i'll try this out this is day two 